Good morning from another amazing day here in southern BC. We are departing Vancouver and the mainland area of southern BC and headed to somewhere very special. We're headed to Vancouver Island. I know I say this for everywhere, but I'm so excited to really, truly enjoy the coastal lifestyle on the island. I think we're gonna have an amazing time going from mountains to beaches to ocean. It's truly unique compared to all the places you find inland. But then again, what parts of BC haven't been unique? In order for us to get to Vancouver Island, we need to hop on the ferry. It should only be about an hour and a half. We're taking the Queen of Westminster, which is the smallest ferry, holding 1,300 passengers, but some of them go up to 2,400 passengers. I didn't even have that many people in my high school. Oh, look at that. We had a perfect day to sail across the Georgia Strait towards Vancouver Island. Sunny, warm, and very windy, which certainly affects us both differently. We are on our way to Schwartz Bay. We'll probably be there in about half an hour now. And our plan for the day is to go past Victoria and head all the way to Port Renfrew, which is on the southwestern point of Vancouver Island. There's some beautiful hiking we want to do there and we're going to go find a BC recreation site to serve as our home base for the next couple of days so we can do some exploring on that part of the island. We came through a strait here that didn't look like it had nearly enough water for a boat this size. I'm not even sure I'd want to take a canoe or a kayak through it, but I'm sure the captains and all the people who work for BC ferries know these waters a lot better than us and sure enough we made it through the strait with no problem except for like the blasting horn that they always do it's just totally deafening on deck hours of driving through some more populated areas and then back into the type of roads we were expecting, the ones where there's not a lot of people, a little bit of construction, some coastal views, we have made it to tonight's campsite. We are staying at another BC recreation site. There is a bachelorette party here tonight by the sounds of it and some people blasting music, so it might not be the quiet retreat we were hoping for, but nonetheless, it's a pretty great spot to rest our heads for the night. We bought these apple ginger Okanagan ciders back in Vancouver, and my goodness, are they spicy. I think they should just be called ginger ciders because really all I can taste is ginger. You think it tastes like more? Yeah. I think it tastes like we need to go to the Okanagan and spend two weeks there too. Please. It's amazing how unique every place has been that we've gone to in BC. I mean, this is totally different from where we were in Ashcroft not that long ago. By the way, Kirsten cooked up some lentil bolognese tonight. It's essentially spaghetti bolognese, but instead of using meatballs or ground beef, you use lentils. It's really quite simple and it's a camp stove classic of ours. It only requires three ingredients. And if we're lucky enough to have sliced cheese, I guess it's a lot better. It tastes quite good too. I love pasta. It's like my favorite food. I gotta be honest, I would do well in Italy. It's about 15 degrees, really, really nice, fairly peaceful except for the screaming girls. And no mosquitoes. That's I know. the best part. It's amazing. Gonna enjoy our dinner, gonna try and finish the rest of the ginger without it burning my throat. And I think we'll see you guys tomorrow. Whew. How did you sleep last night? I slept so good. I love being back in the van. Even just a little bit of time away from it makes me miss it. So it's great to be back and sleeping restfully in our little den. And having the full, well, mostly full size double bed really helps things in there. I just sleep so well, I love it so much. It's like a little cocoon. It's like having a sleeping bag without having a sleeping bag. <laughs> it is. 
it's a really charming place to be here. We're at the local marina and it's pretty peaceful. There's even sea lions hanging around fishing, although we haven't been able to see it again. I think it went deep underwater with its prey and is just enjoying a nice breakfast. But maybe we'll get lucky and see it again and be able to show you guys because they don't come to the surface for long. After chatting with a friendly bike packer at our campsite the night before, he tipped us off that hikers from the Juan de Fuca Trail were raving about a certain stretch of the trail. Naturally, we decided to hike down from the highway, through the forest, and towards an access point for the coastal trail. Vancouver Island is home of some of the oldest trees in Canada. This one behind me looks like it's three trees, but I mean, it's basically a wall. The trunk of the tree is like bigger than two people could fit their arms around. I do think there's a tree here in Vancouver Island that takes like 10 people to wrap their arms around it to fit around. Not sure where that is, but if I'm not mistaken, it exists. It is a misty and foggy morning here on the coast. You can't see more than like 20 feet in front of you, although the surfers did say it was half decent for surfing, but I don't even think you can see your way back to the beach. At this point, the tide is really, really starting to rip in, and I even got my boots soaked at one crossing point. So we're gonna turn around, head back to the car, and go inland to find a camping spot for the night. Oh. That's exactly what we were talking about right there. <laughs> campsites here that were pretty good but I think this one's the best one it's definitely one of the biggest campsites we've ever had and it's amazing too it's actually on Lake Kaochung and we've been talking to a lot of the locals that are camping here they say they've been coming here for anywhere from 5 to 25 years they love the spot we are having leftovers for dinner so honestly we're not really doing anything too special tonight I even think we're gonna spend two nights here because not only do we have enough food but we have enough cash Life's great right now. We've been doing a lot of driving and tomorrow we don't even have to turn the van on if we don't want to. Good morning, well actually good afternoon from Lake Kauchan. We had a great sleep and honestly we had a pretty late start to the day by our standards. I think it was like 8.30 or 9 o'clock before we even got out of bed. Oh, I had such a great sleep. I actually feel like I'm on vacation for once. Like we haven't done anything all day and it feels really weird, but I don't think we're made out for this long term. That's actually not true. We have had a fairly productive day. We started the morning by walking down to the water and filling our solar shower to test it out. That's not gonna work. I think you're supposed to like pump water into it though. That's what it feels like. It's not going so well. Hope this doesn't bust on me. <laughs> Free shower. Then we went for a swim in the beautiful Lake Couchin and it was awesome. The water was actually pretty warm right at the shoreline, but as you got deeper, it did get quite a bit colder. <laughs> Go on, just do it. <laughs> We really don't even have anything left to do today except for maybe prep some firewood that we scavenged yesterday for the fire tonight. We've seen tons of people coming here like on Wednesday 
dropping tents and ditching. They don't even plan on coming back till Friday and in some cases even Saturday for the long weekend. Naughty, naughty. <laughs> naughty, naughty, not so good. We saw a lot of it at the other two sites. There were people like us who actually wanted to use the sites just for today and for tomorrow that got squeezed out by people pitching their tents and not even staying on the site. So I don't approve of this message. Tomorrow is Friday, the well, kind of the first day of the long weekend, and our plan is to head to Nanaimo, but before we do that, we're gonna enjoy some sunshine and just soak in Lake Kauchan. bunch of oatmeal packets, some nuts, as well as some fresh fruit. Today it is pears. So we're gonna make a little crumble on the campfire. Part one was cutting up the pears. Part two, which is super handy if you're looking to do some campfire cooking, is taking this packet of oatmeal. This is instant oatmeal with maple and brown sugar, which is everything I would normally put into a crumble anyways. We're gonna add some flour, some cinnamon, as well as some nuts that we're gonna crush up. And we only have olive oil, so we're adding olive oil to it. Personally, I don't really mind the taste. I don't think it tastes that much different than regular oil, but butter or canola oil would probably be preferred. It's official. This pot looks like it's seen better days. <laughs> Ta-da! Fork or spoon? Spoon, please. Fork for me. <laughs> mm, pretty good. I don't know if you need to add flour though. I think the granola is enough on its own. Mm, it's like a little, little chalky. It's a little dry, yeah. I think I cooked out too much of the liquid. Mm. Pretty tasty. Mm -hmm. Makes your teeth. This is a really fun day and I think this might be my favorite campsite. Uh, we've had so many amazing campsites and I know every new campsite I tend to say that it's probably my favorite. But this one is incredibly private. We can't even see our neighbors, although you can hear them. I mean, that's to be expected. Before we hit the hay for the night, there is one more thing that we noticed last night that we want to try and take advantage of tonight. And that was an amazing sunset. The sky was literally lit with different colors like purple and pink. I cannot wait to see what it looks like over Lake Couchin. Mm -hmm. 